Last night, there were two new arrivals at the Antelope Park Reserve. Come on. Brother and sister, Batoka and Bubesi, had been transferred from one of the project's other sites so they could begin the next part of the programme, night hunting. There we are. Hello, beautiful boy. These two lions have both come back to Antelope Park because here we're an enclosed reserve, which means that we can give them the freedom to roam around here at night uh, quite safely and they can practice their hunting. That isn't something that's possible at our Victoria Falls project. This morning, David and handler McKay and Kube have come to check on the new arrivals. David hasn't worked with the lions for four months and they may not remember the bond they shared. One thing is they haven't come up to the enclosure fence here to greet us. And what's important for them is they need to feel comfortable with us so that they'll follow us out into the reserve and that's how they're gonna get the rest of the experience that they need ready for release. So one of the things we're gonna to do today is just go in with them and start that bonding process. It shouldn't take too long because obviously they are used to it. They just need to realize that, you know, they can be safe around us. Okay, let's go. Okay, just take it very gently, eh? Yeah. The lions were hand reared and for safety, it's important they still see the handlers as dominant members of their pride. Hello, you two. Gently now. Hey, Patoka. Hey, Bobesi. Gently. Hello. Oh, my lions. Come on, easy. Come on, lions. That's what we Come. want. Hello, little girl. Hello. Come on, buddy. Come. Come on. Batoka and Bubesi may look tame, but David and McKay have years of experience, and, this, and their ability nice to read the lion's behavior hello. is the only thing keeping them safe. That's a good sign. The way they greet is just to rub their cheeks up against you. The greeting is a clear indication that the lions still see David as a member of their pride. Hey, come on, come. Some people might think that being here in an enclosure with two large lions is, frankly, a bit insane. The reason why we're able to do this is, from a young age, these lions understand that we are dominant members of their pride. So they've no interest in hurting us. We do discipline them when they're small so they can understand the limits of play behavior with a human. And that's the only training that they get through the whole program. Hey. Like all adolescents, Batoka likes to test the boundaries of acceptable behavior. None of come on. that, thank come. you. Right, come, on, come on, come on, no. Sometimes when they come up, they'll try and just ankle tap you. Um, there are certain things, behaviors, where we don't allow that. Uh, we give them a discipline, which is done in only one way, which is just a slap Come to the on, side man. of the face. Please. It mimics very much what they might get from their mother. That will be front paw slam. Um, and I can tell you when a wild mother does it, there's about a ton of force coming behind it. Me and my little hand, uh, certainly not gonna hurt them, but it's just a sign to them that you overstepped the boundary there and immediately he backed off. Ankle tapping is a skill that lions use to trip their prey. The technique is also used during play fights with other lions, but Batoka has to remember that playing rough with the handlers is not acceptable. Move away. Hey, come on. Come on. Just come. start walking that way. Come. 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 Come on. Come. 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 Come on. Come. 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 There's one more test that David must do before he can be sure that walking with the lions will be safe. Come. Come on. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Let's go, Come on, let's go. So this is also good. We're just trying out a bit of following. Come on. They're responding really well. So this is this is a really good start. I don't think it'll be very long before we can take these out. Hey. Yes. Hello, my boy. Later, David checks on Sango's progress. 
The two-year-old male will soon reach sexual maturity, so he's been separated from his sister, Swahili, and placed with two other males, Echo and Itosha. Hello, boys. Now, Sango in a wild situation, exactly the same with Echo and Natasha, would have been kicked out of their pride that they were born in, and they would have to go it alone. But whilst out in what we call a nomadic phase, it's quite common for young males of different litters to meet up and then join up and become a coalition. So it's quite normal, but the main point here is that all three of them are basically sitting together. There's no injuries, they haven't been fighting, and they seem to be grooming each other as well. This is all good sign that Sango is settling in very well into this new male coalition group. Come on, come. Sango's sister, Swahili, was moved to the other side of the reserve with two other females, Soraya and Sahara. David wants to see how well the group is bonding, so he's leading them out on a hunt to see if they can work together. Come, 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 come. The females are two years old. With lions of this age, it's safer for David and the project volunteers to ride in trucks. This is an important walk uh, from our point of view. We really want to see how is the dynamic working. Come on! At the moment, we've got Swahili leading. She was always, uh, would always follow Sango before and wouldn't lead, so it's good that, uh, that she's out front at the moment. Uh, she seems quite comfortable. She's walking confidently, and the other two are following. They look like a perfectly normal little group of lions here. It's not long before the three females get their first opportunity to hunt as a team. It's quite a large herd of impala just up here on this open flay. It's difficult to tell exactly whether the lions have seen them or not, because they're slightly lower down. But hopefully, at some point, they'll spot a movement and the chase will be on. The Sahara's stalked forward a bit, and that looks like Swahili following it. So they might be picking up on the scent, even if they can't specifically see them yet. Swahili and Sahara start to stalk forward. But in the middle, Soraya doesn't seem to know what to do. Soraya, to be honest, seems oblivious to the whole thing. There's absolutely no accounting for what lions will do. Sahara has clearly seen the impala. Swahili has got it going on. Soraya, on the other hand, is going exactly in the opposite direction. It's all a learning process. OK, now she's got it. But she's interested. Sahara jumped off to the right, obviously flanking. The other two held their position but Sahara does seem to have lost interest. What I have seen before is where a herd runs away in lots of different directions, as this impala herd has just done, it quite often confuses a young lion and they really just don't know which way to go. So I think she might have given up, but they are still slowly heading in the direction of the herd. So we'll try and follow them. OK, do you want to move forward? David's desperate to see effective cooperation between the lionesses. It's their best chance of a kill. Cubs have seen a giraffe. Sahara is leading up front. 
and now the other two are also following. Frankly, I think that meal is just a little bit too big for them, but it's not unheard of. We've had a 13-month-old lion kill a giraffe before. She's getting into the long grass now. That's going to give her cover. Big male giraffe, not a chance. But again, the thing there is she started stalking, OK? And it's the practice. She'll understand that she has to stalk a little bit better, take advantage of the longer grass, and she'll learn for next time when she's approaching something a bit more manageable size. Lions can only charge at top speed for around 30 metres. Stalking skills are vital to get close enough to prey. There's more giraffe just in this open area in front of us. See how it looks like Sweeney's taken a far right flank. Sahara's coming up on the left. Now it looks like Soraya is headed in the same direction Swahili has. This time, the three really cooperate using a typical pride tactic. One lion makes a charge, forcing the prey towards others hidden in the grass. Head towards the two giraffe on the right. Ooh, hold on. <clears throat> Left. <laughs> Although it doesn't pay off this time, it's a significant development. Just move forward through that way slowly. I think the other two will be in there. And now it's getting darker. You can all immediately see a difference in their behaviour. Don't know how best to describe it, except they seem to be walking in a much more determined way. As the light fades, lions gain confidence and energy for the hunt. Their night vision is thought to be seven times better than humans, and they do most hunting at dusk and dawn. Now, in a moment, I'm going to turn on a spotlight that we have. Uh, it's a, it has a red filter on, um, which will reduce the impact that we have on what's going on around us and their natural behaviour. Come, girls. Come on. That's it. Good girls. Three lions are keeping together. They're working as a unit here, and that's really what we wanted to see tonight. Um, Swahili is still leading. Quite a determined little thing, isn't she? Sangha is long forgotten, I'm afraid, and I do think there's possibly an animal coming up on the right-hand side. There is. Just up ahead of us in the long grass is either a diker or a steambok, which is a small antelope, only maybe two feet at most in height. Uh, so we're just going to stop back. The lions hopefully will move in that direction and they'll see it. The problem for the lions to overcome here is that the diker's normal response in fear is to run a short distance and then duck down and sit in the grass. Very quietly and therefore difficult to find. The lioness's sense of smell is weaker than their sight and hearing. If it stays completely still, the little antelope may escape detection. How did she miss it? I think it's sitting down with its eyes closed. <laughs> it's around here somewhere. It's steambuck and canny. Kids, you were so close. <laughs> They're ready to go home. It's time to call it a night. Come on, Zaid, come. Come on, come, 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 come on. We had a couple of good chases this evening and a few near misses, and, yeah, I'm a little disappointed that they didn't manage to get anything, but the important thing is Swahili seems to be very well integrated into this group of three, and, surprisingly for us, she led pretty much the whole way. And looked good doing it. Antelope Park Reserve in Zimbabwe forms part of the African Lion Rehabilitation and Release into the Wild program, a controversial project trying to tackle the problem of declining lion populations. Here, 
captive bred lions develop the skills they need to survive under the guidance of human handlers led by David Yulden. Thank you. 18 month old brother and sister, Batoka and Bubesi, have recently arrived at the reserve from one of the program's other sites on the Zambian border. Well, let's see if we can head that way and see how good these things are at hunting. David hasn't walked with the lions for four months, but he's assessed their behavior to make sure they still see him as a dominant member of their pride. Taking every precaution, he's called in his most experienced handlers. As walks go, this is about as difficult for us as it gets. Uh, obviously, they are quite large and they don't know us that well. Um, so how they're going to react is something new to us. We're going to have to learn very quickly. So I brought quite a few of my colleagues here today. Um, just by having sheer numbers of people on the walk, um, they'll feel a little bit unnerved by that. Um, and therefore, actually, as a result of that, they should calm down a bit. Is everyone feeling OK? Are you confident? Cool. Just normal rules. Just if we can try and stay as a group. OK. Let's go. Come on. Come on, hello. Come on. Come on. Hey, Tox. Come on. That's it. And she's off. Okay, do you want to round them up? The lion handlers will have to run round behind them um, and just make a bit of noise to try and usher them back to the group. As adolescents, Batoka and Bubesi have already developed a strong, independent streak. This way, come on. <laughs> come, you two. Don't know where they're going, but they are determined with it. Come on, come. Toka. Come, Batoka, come. Warthog kids. Just in these first few hundred metres of the walk, we can already see these lions have their own agenda entirely. And that's fine to a point, but what we need to do every so often is just walk away, call them and see if they follow. On this occasion, after a moment's hesitation, they have changed direction. So that's what we need to keep going. Come on. It's not long before lion manager Leanne Marnock spies an opportunity for Batoka and Bubesi. Um, when we were heading across here, we saw some war dogs run away and we've just come across some dung. Batoka picked up the scent. You can see he was sniffing it just now, so hopefully we'll find where they've gone. Come on, boys, come. Come on. Come on, let's go, come. After a while, Batoka picks up warthog scent again. And this time, he's close enough to charge. Close. She's still going. Okay, she's on now. Bubesi joins in the chase. <laughs> Very exciting stuff. Kicked straight in with the hunting instinct for Batoka. He charged off to the left. But Bessie went off to the right. Very, very close chase. This is a great walk. This must be where the warthogs are living. If he's prepared to put that amount of effort in this amount of heat, I think that he's going to be very, very good at hunting at night. Come on. Hello. After the near miss, the handlers start to lead Batoka and Babesi back to their enclosure. No one is prepared for what happens next. Out of the blue, Batoka brings Leanne to the ground. David and the handlers respond immediately, but Leanne suffers a bite wound to her thigh. Some days later, David spends time with Batoka and Bubesi to take stock. Leanne is, is perfectly fine, and actually just speaking to her yesterday, she really can't wait to come back um, and just get back to work again. We do accept that when working with wild animals, there is always a risk um, that you could get injured. But certainly speaking to, for myself, um, I accept risks every day just in 
you know, the normal day-to-day -day activities. Um, and it's my opinion that the risk of walking lions is certainly no higher than many of the other things that I do um, without even thinking of it. Incidents like this are extremely rare, but from now on, the handlers will only work with Batoka and Bubasi from the safety of a vehicle. It minimizes risk while guaranteeing the lion's future. It's everyone's opinion, including the Anne's, that these lions must continue within the program. We'll just need to consider how we work with them over the coming weeks so that these lions that we've all invested so much time and, and effort into do get the full benefit of the release program.